Welcome back. It has been really hot lately, but tonight is a nice stormy night, and that rain is bringing the temperatures down. So I decided tonight is a good night to try to tune the Sebring Sprite. I will be racing it in a couple weeks at the World Healy Challenge at Road America. Let's make some runs and see if we can get the car dialed in. This car is an FIA logbooked under one liter race car. So this is a slightly worked over 948 cc engine. I have had this car on the track for a test day and then also a race. The head gasket blew at the end of the weekend at the last race. And I have never had the car on the dyno, so I have no idea how much power this engine makes. I'm not going to know exactly how the carbs were set during the last race. When the car started to show issues, I did mess with the carbs, so they are not in the same position they were during the race. So I think right now, let's just get a base run, find out how much power it makes, and see where our tune is. I am going to be using the external O2 sensor of my dyno to find out where the mixture is. So I just need to shove this pipe down the exhaust pipe, and then we'll see how the carbs are tuned. The sniffer is in the exhaust pipe. Let's hop in and make a run. In order for the dyno to know the engine RPM, I will have to connect a lead to one of the spark plug wires and I'll ground that out as well. Now let's start it up and make sure all the readings are correct. Looks like everything's working. We have our RPM over here. Here we have our air fuel mixture. We're right now we're between 12.6 and 13. So that's looking really good. If it stays there during the run, we're going to be right in the area of best wide open throttle power and lean best torque. So it's kind of where we want to be. So let's hope it stays right there. I stopped the run way early because we were running way too rich. We're down at an AFR of about 10. We only made 20 horsepower and 30 torque. So that's not too far off from a stock 948, but obviously we can make a huge improvement over this. We need to really lean those carbs out. And I'm also wondering if we have the wrong needles for this car because it's idling at a really good AFR but under power, you can see it's just super rich. So we may need to adjust the needles. Let's see where we can get to without any parts. Currently we have a pair of SUHS2 carbs on this engine, which might just be too big of a carb for the amount of power that this engine makes. I'm going to take my SU adjusting tool and lean the carbs out. Okay, I have them adjusted to nine flats of enrichment. Let's try this.
Okay, that was a way different result, and I've had to graph it by speed this time instead of RPM. That's because these jagged lines is when the ignition was breaking up on me, and since I ran it up to closer to full RPM, I ran it only to about 5,000 RPM, it looks like 80 miles an hour. We did double the amount of horsepower we saw. We are up to 30 horsepower now, but that's only because I ran it further up in the RPM. As you can see, the actual horsepower difference is very slim and we did lean it up quite a bit. The one good thing is that the line is very flat. So that means our mixture was very consistent over the entire run. There was no fluctuation in it. I'm not sure why we saw the ignition breaking up this time, but this is suggesting that we should lean the carbs out even more than this. We're going to make our changes in increments now. So I just leaned it out by three flats and we're sitting at a total of six enrichment. Right now at idle, it looks like our air fuel mixture is roughly averaging about 14, which is really good. So we are leaning it out a bit. Let's see what it does under load. All right, this time we're making about the same power and torque as we were before. Uh, we did not see the ignition break up like we did in the last run. We're still running really rich and I don't think I want to lean the carbs out anymore. I think we better take a look at the choke cable and make sure that the chokes on the carbs are not affecting the mixture in any way. So that I know the choke will not be affecting what we're doing here, I'm going to loosen this linkage so that when the choke cable is pulled, it does not affect the carbs. It will not actually pull on this linkage and pull the choke for either carb. Now, if you look, that is completely loose. I'm also going to manually push these up, make sure that they are up all the way, and they are. So it doesn't look like those were affecting it. So let's go a couple more flats and see what happens. Okay, I've leaned out our mixture by another three flats. We're sitting at a total of three flats of enrichment. Okay, we're finally seeing some big differences here at idle. We're very lean at idle right now. And you can see I have not changed anything about the throttle and our RPM is down considerably from where our RPM was before. So this could mean one of two things that the chokes were affecting it or that just a few flats of adjustments is going to make a big difference with this engine. Let's run it now and see what happens. To not make things confusing, I have up here now just the, our first run and then the run that I just did. I did run this one all the way up to 6,000 RPM. And you can see that the maximum power happened at about 5,500 RPM. So 6,000 is probably as high as we do want to rev the engine because the uh, power starts to drop off after it. We're still sitting at about 30 horsepower and a 30 torque, and our mixture is only slightly going leaner. So we're still too rich. I think these carbs are just way too big for this engine, or we need to take a look at some completely different needles and jets for it. I'm going to go ahead and lean the carbs out completely. We'll make another run and we'll see where that is, but I don't think it's going to move much. Okay, I have now leaned out the carbs absolutely as far lean as they could possibly go. Let's see if the engine will even run. Normally a car would not run if you did this. Yep, still running. 
we take a look at the computer, our RPM has come down a little bit as well. And the AFR is just pegged it. It can't read any leaner than it is right now. So I'm actually surprised that the engine is running right now. Okay, as far as air fuel ratio, we're finally moving in the right direction. This green line is our last run. We're getting much, much closer to where we need to be. Our power is basically around the same 30 horsepower, 33 torque. So I need to get these needles out and take a look at them. We need to decide, are we changing carburetors? Are we changing needles? Or is there another problem? I'll take one of these pistons out in a minute because I'm sure you're curious of what needles I do have in here. But I do want to mention one other cause that I've seen cars run like this, and that's when the fuel pressure is just so high that it's able to force the fuel past the needle. And this car has a racing fuel cell with fuel pumps built into it. And we do have a regulator filter combination here, but we might need to dial the fuel pressure back a little bit more. But dialing pressures that are this low can get real finicky and I've had a lot of problems with regulators dealing with pressures when you're getting below three PSI. Let's take a look at what needle we have in here. Okay, let's take a look at it. Looks like we have needle M. So we can consult the needle chart and see where we wanna go from there. Also, let's check our fuel pressure real quick. So if we turn that on, we're about 3.7 PSI, almost four. That should be fine for these carbs. I think we just have a needle and jet problem. Well, the storm outside is just getting worse and it's about 11 o'clock at night. So I think we're going to stop right here. If you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.